Hi, in this exercise I will demonstrate the introduction of I.O. Uh, signals, uh, digital outputs really, uh, for a gripper and uh, the workstation will be um, uh, designed for that purpose. Uh, also, uh, I will demonstrate how to translate paths and also procedures for the gripper open, close and uh, some simulation examples based on that. Okay, so we get going. Um, the uh, library parts uh, is uh, shown in the YouTube channel where you can download those. So we select a name, just take something here that to test X and uh, we have vocation should be my exercises and solutions and we have the robot is the one irb140 robot and uh, so we just create that one okay it starts up the virtual controller starting here connecting everything green it will ask for which robot to use from the library. Take the first one. Okay, like that one. So, looking fine. And now we add the uh, digital outputs. So, on the controller tab here, we change options of the virtual controller and uh, click on industrial networks and then we select the profibus controller and the profinet device click on ok it says now that the changes will not take effect until the virtual controller system is reset do you want to reset the system and restart the controller now yes we want to do that sometimes it happens that it really doesn't restart in the proper way if that is the case we'll see in a short while i do this manual by this button here restart but we wait a few seconds more and it seems that we need to get a kick on this one so we just click on restart again and uh, hopefully it will get going yes and everything seems to be fine and then we have to go to the configuration editor in the controller tab with that one the io system and then we have the profibus device i right click on this one and then i can add a new profibus device left click on that one and the name of this one should be board 10 which is a physical board attached or, or mounted in the controller just click on ok everything is fine it says changes will not take effect until the controller is restarted but we wait for that sometime now we right click on the signal here a new signal well, yes, if I click on signal, you see all the signals here. Uh, they are all of those internal uh, in the system, but now we add a new signal and the name could be whatever actually. Uh, we call this open and um, type of signal could be then a digital output. Uh, well, actually, I can call this gripper open and assign to device should be board 10, which is the board I'm connecting to. Device mapping is which physical output I connect this connection to, which can be between 0 and 15. So I can select whatever I like, 14, for example. So select, uh, I will use 14 and 15 in this case. And okay. And 
again I need to restart the controller but I need one more uh, yeah as you see uh, we have this uh, ripper open here well let me spell it that uh, we can change that so name uh, ripper close and type of signal is a digital output assigned to device board 10 mapping output 15 okay fine so i have two here and if i if i click on that one i right click on that one i can edit the signal i can change the naming here to gripper open okay fine now we are ready with this and restart the controller and okay wait for that one good now we can go to the home tab again and start modeling the station and from import library i import pre-made libraries uh, of different parts related to this uh, exercise uh, a brick a gripper a, a piece to move around and the table for or the stand for the robot i take all at the same time and looks like this so what's happening now is that we have the gripper in the origin or the base origin or the base frame or the task frame we have a brick here with a workpiece we look at that later and we have the robot uh, which has to be lifted so what we do now is to click on the controller tab and we can view and click on task frame and we want to raise the task frame so that the robot will stand on the location uh, suited for that robot within the table and uh, we select 170 millimeters in the set direction and apply and i also want to move the base frame of the robot so that i close that one that so everything is just fine the standing at the right place we have the gripper here as you can see and next we take the kind of home tab again and lay out and drag the gripper to the robot and click on yes we want to update the position of the gripper that one now if we zoom in on that one you will notice that there is an object between the fingers of the gripper we will use that as a detection that we are hitting or colliding with the object this one which we are going to move around that, that, that is useful we use that later on uh, for the time being i make that invisible i right click on it and click on the visible here which is checked and unchecked that so we don't see it now but it still exists of course and the gripper so what we are going to do now is to populate the brick with more objects to move around in this exercise so i click on the piece 12 here right click copy now i can click ctrl v as in uh, sorry i can click on that one so ctrl v for that one and two three four times so we have five in total uh, as you see i highlighted the uh, top of the whole station lab to test x and then they will pop down here when i hit the control v as in paste i can also right click on that one and paste if i like okay 
So we have those five and the same location as this one. And now we have to place them in that, 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 and that hole. And if I right click on this one and I use position, set position, and I use the local reference and 50 millimeter in the X direction, which is red, that one. So it's indi get an indication here that this is the right one. Yes, apply. Now we can choose this one that is correct as it is. That one uh, should be located here. I select local and then minus 50 in the X direction. Apply that one local minus. 100 millimeter in the x direction and the final one the five and local minus 150 millimeters and close that one good so then we have these now located in a nice manner those will then be gripped by the grasped by the uh, uh, robot, uh, the gripper on, on the robot, attached to the robot, and then move to this location here. And that one, that one, and so forth, until it is ready. And what we also need is a work object located here. Well, actually, any placement can be okay, but I choose this here and then one here as a reference for all the targets. Uh, okay, so under the other here, we have great work object. We can name it to whatever, but brick object, for example. And then we have a user frame like that. But before that, we need to have a snap mode on the end. And we have to click on this one again. And then we click on that one at the bottom of the plate. Good. So that is what we accept. And then we're making orientation. Now we would like to have the set going, the set arrow or direction going downwards. So if we orient around the y axis 180 degrees, like that, the x will go to the left, like that. Y stays as it is and the set goes downwards. Accept that one, and then we just create that. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, we can update that easily. So we click on that one and right click, modify work object. And what we do now is that we have the, uh, we have the uh, user frame we need to change the object frame. And what we do here is that we want the object frame to be in the center of the whole of this object. And that is 25 millimeter. And 25 millimeter, and this plate is eight millimeter thick. And then we want to grasp it, say a little bit above, say five, five millimeters above, the surface, so that means minus 13 millimeters, except and about like that. So, yeah, everything is fine. Okay, now after this, uh, yeah, we close this one. We want to have a home position in an appropriate placement and. Um, we right click on the robot 
and uh, oh sorry on the layout so right click on the robot and mechanism joint jog the first one should be 90 degrees and the fifth one should be okay, 60 degrees pointing down would be a good starting point and click the x to kill that window and this could be a good composition for this task so we click on teach target we have we have uh, the work object the brick object we have the grip one is a two uh, we can check this now we can have velocity thousand we can have well we, we select 10 as a, as a general value for this one here that will be changed later on anyway for the different uh, targets but we make it each target now and that we can find below brick object a target then and after that we are going to create the targets for picking and grasping and releasing the first object here so to do that we need actually only four targets one above one here somewhere one above that one below to release it and what we do now is to click on target create target uh, the reference should be work object and we have the target name can be whatever pick one underscore 10 and that will the next one be pick one underscore 20 30 40 and so on and uh, we have the right work object here and the first one should be zero zero but above this one say to be whatever we can select 50 millimeters above the surface add here here and then we take the next one at zero level which will be actually five millimeters above the surface as we defined it and then we take one 50 millimeter above this hole here which is 50 millimeter in the y axis direction 50 millimeter on the green one and minus 50 in the z direction that and then one down which is zero sorry uh, zero on the z like that and, and now just click on create so we have that one that one that one and that one now we need to create a path for this one so create right click on this one create a path call it pick one and we start with the target 10 which is the home position and then we click on the first one hold shift and click on pick one the last one pick 40 and just drag those down to this one they should come in that order now if they don't you can move those around as you like you just create them drag them like that so what is happening now is that we get an indication of the path and that indication will also reflect the the uh, z value we have set 10 in this case um, and we can close this one now we don't need that one uh, what we also can make a notion of we start up here go down to that one down here then we should actually go up again so we need pick one and it's called 10 again so we drag that one that one so we get 10 number 30 40 we should have an ending with a 30 target again so we drag it to that one so now that is more it's complete and we can right click on the path and uh, 
do a um, configuration check or we just select auto configuration this is pretty simple and it should be no problem robot should easily find a configuration and that's pretty much okay i think uh what we now can also check is that actually when we go down here we need fine points so we have to check that and modify or edit instruction so for that one we need a fine like that and we shouldn't have thousand we should have something like 100 millimeters because it's um going more detail mo movement and up began that that is okay a thousand to that uh, position and then go down go up again you can select say 200 and 10 is fine and then pick 130 we can have something like 200 apply we go down we need a fine Ah, sorry, we need uh, something like 100 here, and the Z value should be a fine apply. And then we can move up again, and that will be a little faster. And then it's fine with its zone and apply. So that is pretty much fine. And we need something more before we go for trying out the simulation we need a main function so great path right click on that one click on that one and change the name to main and it will turn out to an entry point for the simulation and then i drag the pick one path into the main procedure now if I open that one, I have the pick one procedure within the main, like this one. And just to check things now, I can synchronize to rapid and I'll check everything just to be sure. Okay. And uh, the rapid tab here and close this one. And uh, Wrap it here, go down, double click on module one, like that one. So we have the module one with the robot targets. We have the pick one procedure with the um, motions. And we have the main, which actually get the ball rolling, so to say. That is the one, the process, the procedure that will stop. Uh, executing and that will call the pick one procedure which is actually the first path we defined that should be fine but just to check that everything works as expected go to the simulation tab simulation setup and for that one we have the entry point main that's fine click on the view one again and see everything here and play yeah seems to be running as it should okay after this now we have to introduce a few things that are needed in reality if you want to run this for sure so when we go down here we should actually grasp this object but um, before that, we introduce some uh, weight operations. So we create an action instruction under other and uh, wait time. Click on time and drag on this one and enter 0 0.3 seconds. 
uh, I found that to be a suitable time for the gripper I used. It could be different, different cases. Now, if we just right click on that one, I can copy that one, and we should have the same operation when we release the uh, object. So right click on that one and paste. So we get the wait time here as well. That's fine. Before that, I mean, when we come to that fine point, we should actually then uh, close the gripper. And that is done by setting the digital output, that one. And we have the grip close, it's fine. Set that to one. And we should also make sure that we opened the valve in that direction as the opening is. So the open should be zero. That is not active, so to say. It's just open. Right? Good. So we close it. Fine. So that is a closing operation. In the beginning, we should make sure that the gripper is open. And um, we do the same thing but the opposite way. So set digital output. We have the gripper open to one. And we set digital output gripper close to zero. And that or those, oh, sorry. And we select both by clicking and holding shift on the other one or control, and then right click, copy. Then we take that one, we click on that one and right click and paste so we have set the throat gripper open one so it opens and then we wait 0 0.3 seconds so just to check that everything is working in a right way we do a synchronization to rapid and everything is selected okay and uh, then we do a simulation just to play and see what is working. Now, well, we cannot see if actually the IO is operating as expected, but we have an IO simulator here. We click on that one, and now we have all the inputs outputs available. We only want to see the device here, board 10. So we have gripper close, grip, gripper open. So if we see what is happening now, we can actually, no. So what is happening now is that uh, we just run this one and in the beginning, the gripper open should be one and then gripper close is one and finally gripper open is one again. So now we look here, one here, one there. So yes, it seems to be working quite well. The next we're going to do is to get the gripper actually to grab this one and move it around. For that one we need an event trigger. And when we click on configure under the simulation tab we have the events editor coming up and we add an event. Activation on IO signal changed, next, and then we have the uh, gripper open, that one, signal is true, next, and when that is open, is true, we should detach an object, we can detach any object that is within the gripper and detach from the gripper. Finish. And then you add another one. Next. 
for the gripper close. Next. And set action type attach object. Detach it and find the closest object. Now what is going to happen is that we will have a collision between the invisible object between the fingers and the object we're going to move. We keep the position and attach it to the gripper and finish. Fine. And then we go back to the view again and run the simulation. So we just run play here and if everything goes fine, it will move it around like that one. Now, if we try to do something just to run it again, something odd will surely happen. So what we're going to do is to reset everything, click on that once. We didn't change anything, so we can do it once. But at this stage, we move the robot to the home position, jump to the move. And then we set we set this state as an init for all the simulations. So save the current state. Just call it this init. It's fine. And then include what we're doing here. Okay. So that is fine. Now we can run the simulation again. If we run it once more without changing anything, just where we are, something else will happen. That one. Because there was nothing to take except the brick, so to say. So I'll go back in it. Then pops down, pops back. That's fine. So, what are we going to do now? Well, we should actually check up a few things related to the pro, the rapid program. And uh, although everything seems to be working fine, before we copy and translate the paths, we should uh, write or change the rapid program be more nice so to say so we have these open and close operations and uh, just to indicate how this could be written in a nicer way so we could have a procedure open gripper and close gripper or just call it open and close this simple program so we have a procedure open and for that one just copy control C and paste control V these instructions here and then and with and procedure like that one and then we have a procedure close and for that one just copy control c these instructions here gripper close gripper, uh, and control v and and procedure and just so, and to finalize this here, we just call open and delete these instructions and And then we have close. Oh, let me spell it. 
like that. And it's fine. As you see here, if I move the mouse over the instruction, uh, the editor is language sensitive, so it will immediately recognize that there is a procedural clause that has been defined on line 13, which is here. Before actually I have submitted or, 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 or saved the, um, what I have written. So everything goes directly. And here I write open like that. And after this, just make an apply. You can take changes or all, it doesn't really matter. So it says no errors, that's nice. So everything should be working in a good way. And now I synchronize back to the station and select everything. So when I go back here to home, check this, I can see that there is one procedure or close and one procedure open. And those are introduced now in the pick one um procedure here everything seems fine i would just want to check that the simulation still runs as expected so reset to init state and run the simulation it is working as it should go back to the init state okay fine so now we are ready to actually translate the procedures and paths pick one. So I do a right click on that one and uh, I would like to to um, copy that one. And then I right click on paths and procedures and click on paste and it says here that copy path to task one or several instruction descriptions are not present in the destination task okay so this really happens when i have procedures calls within the path if i didn't have that as before i introduced the open and close this would have been a proper way to do it but in this case I instead now have to create the path and I click on that one, change the name to pick two. I right click on that one, and create the path again and have a pick three and click on that one, right click, create path and name it pick four. And left click, right click on that one, create path, and name it pick five. That one. And now, what I do now is to click on that one, hold shift, and on the last one, control Z, and click on pick two, and control V. And now it says create new targets. Should new targets be created? Yes, indeed. And now we have new targets on this one here with new naming target 10 underscore 2, and then we have pick 1 underscore 10 underscore 2, and so forth. Everything is the same. So, but it is actually at the same location it is really a duplicate duplication duplication so what we do now is right click on this one and then we go to the path and then we translate the path and reference frame is a select frame uh, so we click on here where we define the work object. Fine. 
and the translation vector should be 50 millimeters and apply so as you see the red x-axis is in this direction and now that location is at the second one so close this one and check that how things will operate what we do now is when we click on this one and the pick two and we drag that into the main procedure so we have a pick two there when we have that one we can run the simulation and we just click on play button Ah, yes, something happens because this, what we've done, is not synchronized to the virtual controller. So we have to do that because the virtual controller is actually running the rapid code for us. So we do synchronization to rapid and click on everything and OK. And uh, let's to check and see how things look like. Um, so what the one we have pick one we have the pick two and yes what we can notice here is that for pick two we actually move back to the home position which is target 10. in this case we rather don't need to do that because we ended here at pick one underscore 30 and then we should move to the above the next next uh, rock object so we can delete the first two statements here or keep the open but we don't don't need to do that so we just delete these two operations and then we go above the next one uh, i think that is pretty fine we go down in velocity if we like to do that, like 500, and everything should be quite fine after that one. But when we did that, we need to apply all the changes, no errors, and then we synchronize back to the station. Like that. Now we can check the simulation. We do an init and run it seems to be fine and the next one yes so now we are ready to copy and paste and translate all the others we just do the init first to the home tab and then we take all the instructions in the pick two select those control c Click on pick three, control V. We create new targets, yes, like that one. And right click on that one, path, translate path. And we have a select frame, which should be that one. And you can see here is the brick underscore object as the reference and we have minus 50 millimeters fly that one oh something went wrong so let me select the frame again we have that one should have 50 millimeters like that Like that, good. And after that one, we can click on this one, select all, Control C, click on pick four, right click, and paste. Let's create new targets. Like that one. And after that. Click on that one, 
we have translate paths pick four in this window which we didn't close at this time we select the frame we have that one and 50 millimeter lie yes that one and now we just select those within the pick four control c click pick five control v create new targets like that one those are here and make that selected pick five and 50 millimeters apply like that and close so now we have the five targets copied and translated so everything should be ready for run the simulation but before that again we need to synchronize to rapid ah sorry i forgot we need to also make sure that the main routine has the pick one pick two pick three pick four and pick five like that now we can do synchronization to rapid make sure everything is selected and just to see how it looks now now we have pick one pick two three four five we have the main routine here pick one two three four five in a row and if we run the simulation we have the simulation set up this actually the tier of one the main entry point so everything should work and click on that one and then we click on play and it should take one after the other one like this now it ends up at this position maybe we want to go back to the home position uh, that is of course possible and we have a target 10 and that is the home position just check right click on this one and jump to target yes that is that one so we just drag that one down to the last instruction and it counts at the end of pick five that was generated actually when we did the first copy paste and translation of pick two we can delete it we don't need it and um, now we do a synchronization back to rapid again because we did some changes and just to check how it looks like so we have at the end of peak five target 10. velocity thousand that's fine everything seems fine and we go to simulation tab and before we start we do a, a back to the state init like this one and now we can start and have a look what it looks like So everything seems to be working fine. Now there are a few things anyone can play around with. I mean, for example, if we select in rapid code or in the workstation, doesn't matter where actually we can move around how these are called here. Pick one, three, two, maybe not five because we have the ending, ending, um, uh, but of course we can change whatever here. But then there will be more editing so it could be if we pick one three four two five for example but when we do it in the workstation we need to do this synchronization otherwise it will not be propagated to the rapid code which actually is run by the virtual controller uh, but now it is synchronized and now we can play it around oh sorry i did a mistake here of course so we stop it here go back to reset with the init state now we can play it again we will do this many times
So now it do it pick one, pick three, pick four, pick two after that one, and then it will do pick five. And home. And of course I can go to the rapid code and do the same here. I had that here, check four, three, two, three, five. So and then I just do an apply changes. No errors, do then synchronization translation and uh, that one and simulation. And I have to do an init and then uh, play. Of course, I mean, this can be as complicated as one like it to be, really. So that could, for example, be a uh, um, simulated sensor that uh, tells the robot or some logics what workpiece to move. So anything can be done more or less. And uh, I will explain in later exercises how to model and simulate uh, sensors, mostly binary sensors in that case. But uh, and that will be explained later. Okay, bye for now.